Ooh, hello my friends, hope you are well. A little while ago on the channel, I had a go at making my first completely sculpted miniature from scratch, and it went pretty well, but it was basically just a ghoulish blob with teeth. So I told myself I'd do something a little bit harder for my next attempt, going for a much more humanoid shape instead, and today we're doing just that, so let's get into it. I wasn't planning to sculpt another miniature again so soon, but I saw a post on Reddit asking who'd originally sculpt this old 40k librarian, and it got me feeling pretty jazzed up about the old school process. We're currently living in the golden age of miniatures where you can use computerized rendering methods to whip up an insanely high quality sculpt and then print it off in your mum's basement with a 3D printer. And these modern miniatures make the old ones like this librarian look a little bit goofy by comparison. And to be fair, they are a little bit goofy even without the comparison, but knowing that someone had lovingly hand sculpted the original versions of miniatures like this gives them a real sense of charm and nostalgia that's missing from some of the newer ones we have. One quick thing I will mention for this build is that the old 40k miniatures were on a slightly smaller scale, sitting on these 25mm bases, but I'm going to scale this up to be more of a similar size to the modern Space Marines, whacking it onto a 40mm base instead. I decided to do this as I was feeling a bit unsure about my ability to sculpt a space marine of any size, but having to battle against creating extra tiny details on the original scale would have made it even harder for a rookie sculptor like myself. So yeah, once I'd built up a suitably sized armature for our old school librarian, I covered the whole thing in an initial layer of milliput. The purposes of this was to start bulking out the frame, establish some of the most basic shapes, and provide a solid layer to start building up my armor pieces and details in a moment. I had to remind myself to keep this more on the skinny side though, as going too thick in your initial layer will make it a lot more difficult to end up with decent proportions after you've added all your other layers. So one good tip for sculpting by hand is that it's very easy to add more material and very hard to remove material once it's cured, so definitely start skinny. Anyway, with that first layer of millipart, I've got a funky little silhouette of Optimus Prime wearing flares and it was time to start building up the armour. I've been watching a bunch of videos on miniature sculpting recently to try and improve on my first attempt, and one tip that I was seeing quite frequently was to use a mixture of milliput and green stuff as the medium. In my previous video I used green stuff only, which did work pretty well, but I had a couple of negatives that affected my finished sculpt. The first was that I struggled to get a smooth finish, sometimes due to the green stuff having quite a firm and plasticky nature, and the second was that green stuff can't really be sanded when it's cured, which again makes it a lot more difficult to get a nice smooth finish. The main advantage of green stuff is its ability to sculpt fine details, which just so happens to be the biggest weakness of Millipart, as Millipart has a bit more of a coarse and almost clay-like texture to it before it cures. By mixing the two together though, you can in theory nullify the weaknesses of each other and retain all the positives, so we get the level of fine detail sculpting green stuff allows, but also a mixture that's a lot easier to work with and can also be sanded thanks to the Millipart. I'm calling this mixture greeny putt and it's honestly really good I used an equal 50-50 blend of greeny putt for this mini and I found that this ratio was perfect for the majority of the sculpting work required. If you want to try this for yourselves and find out the 50-50 blend isn't allowing you to get the level of fine detail you need, then just increase the ratio of green stuff to milli putt to 60-40 or maybe even 70-30, but generally speaking the 50-50 blend seems to be a good all-rounder. So yeah, I was really glad that I started using this new mixture as it allowed me to build up the main armour panels quite easily. Before I started, I'd been unsure about the pauldrons especially as I wasn't quite sure how the greeny part would behave here, but it ended up being really easy to just squidge on a couple of blobs of this stuff and then smooth it out into a kind of bell shape. And I was genuinely surprised how close I was able to get their shapes with just one layer. When the first coat had fully cured, I went around with a couple of files and some fine sandpaper to refine the shapes and smooth out any imperfections, and this is where the value of adding the millipot was most evident, as the cured greeny pot was so easy to sand, and it gives you another option for improving your sculpt after it's cured, as opposed to having to do all the refinement work while it's curing. For my second round of greeny pot, I got to work on adding some of the smaller details that would help to give the miniature a bit more visual interest and look a lot less basic. 
One of the key lessons I learned from my last sculpting attempt and from all the videos I watched on this recently was how important it is to work in layers. If I tried to add these finer details while the previous layer was still soft, I would have almost definitely ended up ruining something I'd spent time shaping, making the process a lot more frustrating and time consuming than it needs to be. But by allowing the first layer to cure fully, I give myself a nice firm surface that's not going to be ruined by any slips on my sculpting tool, which also lets me shape my second layer of greeny part easily. So for example, I was quite skeptical of how well I'd be able to do these trim pieces on the pauldrons, but having the firm surface underneath meant I could easily shape them with my tools and cut off any excess with a hobby knife to get them looking pretty straight. It was starting to look a bit empty down below the bell, which no man wants, so I decided to add a little mini tabard here, which again was really easy, just adding a little sheet of the greeny part and using my sculpting tools to add some creases into it. I then used a couple more blobs to shape some nice elbow pads to hide the gaps between the joins and protect his elbows from any scrapes when he falls over. I also gave him a nice belt buckle for some added pizzazz and a little bit of trim around his neck hole. And he's looking pretty good at this point actually. I was quite pleased with how it's progressing, so it felt like a good time to make an attempt on his equipment. The old school librarian mini I saw was holding a book in one hand and a sword in the other, and I thought it'd be best to incorporate a bit of plastic card for building these. So for the sword, I snipped off a bit of styrene rod to act as the hilt and cut a piece of thin plastic card into a rough blade shape. I filed the edge of this down so it'd look a bit more like an actual sword when it was painted and then glued the two pieces together. For his little book, I took some more of that thin plastic card sheet, cut off a couple of squares and sandwiched some green stuff between them, and then glued on a tiny offcut to act as its spine. I used my hobby knife to add some little lines, giving the impression of pages, and glued it into place on the hip of the miniature. I decided to glue the book into place first as I thought this would make adding and shaping the hand around it a bit easier. And I can't lie, the hands were the areas I was most worried about on this entire build as I thought it would be a nightmare trying to sculpt the individual tiny little fingers in a way that actually looked good. But in the end I basically just used a blob to form a bit of a rough gauntlet shape and then separated the fingers off this blob using the straight edge of my sculpting tool. After that, I used a tiny bit more green stuff to form the thumb shapes, clutching the book and wrapping around the hilt, and finally added some indents to make them look a bit more kind of mechanical or armor plated. To finish this section off, I built up the hilt with a handguard and a chunky old gemstone, gave the tabard a bit more detail because why not, and then added a nice big pommel on the end here. And with that, it's probably about time I show you how I made this guy's bonds. So I started working on this when the first layer of armour was curing, and although I said the hands were the areas on this sculpt I was most worried about, it was probably actually the head and the face. I mean, there were a lot of areas of this build that were worrying me to be honest, basically the whole build was worrying me, but anyway. I'd taken some advice on Reddit from some much better miniature sculptors than myself, and based on this I started with a roughly skull shaped blob with slits across where the eyes and mouth would go. Once that cured, my next step was to build up a nose shape using another little blob of greeny part, followed closely by adding some tiny lip shapes, which helped to give the mouth hole a bit more of a natural shape. After that, I added some more greeny part onto the cheekbones to pad them out a bit, and did the same with a skinny sausage on the brow line and around the jaw to give these areas a bit more definition and shape. Again, I gave that some time to cure properly so I wouldn't end up ruining my hard work by mistake, then used another little blob to give him some hair. I didn't have a specific plan for the hair, I basically just started adding little lines and slits to give the impression of strands. <laughs> it's definitely not a haircut I'd want for myself, and he kind of reminds me of a Roman or some kind of monk or something, but it didn't look awful enough for me to want to redo it. I realised something was missing still though, so I gave him some ears, which ended up being quite hefty. He looks like he could probably hear an ant fart from a mile away, but your ears never stop growing, so I'll just give him some white hair later and it'll all make sense. The last thing I needed to do for the face was add some eyes, so I stuck in some tiny balls of greeny putt into the eye sockets and then squished them down a bit so they look like eyes of little eyelids above them. And there we go, he's not got the best looking face out there, but there's no denying that he does in fact have a face, so I think this was a fairly good result for my first tiny sculpted face. He's not very symmetrical and probably needs some more smoothing out next time, but some of the original 40k miniatures had the jankiest faces imaginable, so I'll probably just lie and say that I was trying to recreate an authentic old school 40k jank look. Anyway, I stick in a little blob to act as his neck, attach the head on top of that, and now I'll show you how I made the power pack. 
And I mean, at this point, you can probably guess exactly how I did it. I started off with a kind of basic 2D house shape that I'll use as my foundational piece, glued on this wire to attach the little venting nodules later, and then layered on another blob, which I shaped up a bit to hide the wire. Next, I added two roughly ball shaped pieces for the vents, and when that had all cured, I added another larger layer on top, which I poked some holes into to get it looking a bit more similar to the typical Space Marine power pack. Later on, I sanded off the bottom of the vent nodule so they'd be flat and added a little disc of greeny putt, which I indented a bunch of times with my hobby knife to look like actual vents. I added a couple of kind of hood pieces onto the vent nodules and smoothed those over just because I like the extra little layer of detail they provided. And as a very final touch, I just stuck on this random little chunk of greeny putt with some indentations on it to look like some kind of generic sci-fi greebly thing. And there we go, it wasn't perfect looking, but again, I think it's at least recognisable as the power pack, so I was happy enough to proceed and stick it onto our boy's back with the help of another blob of greeny putt to bridge the gap. And now we were very much approaching the end of this build, so I just did a few finishing touches like adding these little creased articulating pieces on the inner elbows and behind the knees, and then did the last major piece of work being the aquila or insignia, whatever the f*** you want to call it on the chest here. Since I'm barely a novice sculptor, I wasn't feeling confident enough to try anything massively complicated here. My main concern was just getting it to not look awful, so I went for quite a kind of generic wing design with a little central nodule to keep them company. And it looked okay, it would definitely do its job of adding a bit more interest, but I wasn't really happy with this piece. And it's definitely something I'd like to work on more for the future. It basically just looks like a low budget version of the Buzz Lightyear symbol, so it's, it's not the best. But anyway, the very last touch of sculpting I did was to add a bit of extra tabard between the belt and the chest plate, as this area is looking a bit empty now, and I think all things considered, I've done decently with the sculpt. Especially when you consider this is my first proper humanoid miniature, and second sculpted miniature overall. There's a bunch of things I do like about it, on top of all the things I'd want to improve for next time, but for now, let me whack a coat of paint on this bad boy, and come back to you with my final thoughts. So my friends, what do you think? As you just saw, I went for quite a bold old school paint style to match the sculpt and I do think I've achieved the goal I set in the beginning of this video of replicating a decent looking old school style 40k space marine librarian. That was a mouthful. Of course, I do have eyes like most of you guys do, and I can see that some of the details are a bit jank, like the insignia is not great, and the mouth especially is in a bit of an awkward pose, but overall I think he's pretty recognisable, and there are a lot of positives and learning experiences from this build that I can apply to my next attempt. I think it's pretty inevitable that I will get fully into computerised sculpting and 3D printing miniatures eventually, but making this little guy's really lit a bit of a fire in me for physically sculpting miniatures. There's just something really rewarding and satisfying when you make something by hand, and it feels quite cool to go through the process that sculptors of old school miniatures went through many moons ago. I've still got a long way to go before I can claim to have any real kind of proficiency in the skill, but I'm feeling very excited about it. So if you've got any ideas for things you'd like to see me attempt to sculpt or just want to tell me about what your favourite TV show of 2024 is and why it's Fallout, then drop a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe or leave a like as I'd love to make more stuff like this in the future. For now though, as always, I have been your friendly neighbourhood swamp rat and I will see you very soon in another video. See ya.